Hey guys, currently we're on a high speed train over to Guilin going 247 kilometers an hour. But before we get into this vlog, we're gonna let you know a bit about the process of how we got onto here. At Guangzhou South train station, it is massive. It's like an airport. It's the biggest train station we've ever been to at least. So where the taxi dropped us off was level three, but where we needed to go to get our tickets is level one, because we booked ours online. Don't forget, we also need passports too. was from my childhood dreams and we're gonna go back to New Zealand because I had something to say about this place right now. Yo guys at the time of filming this we're still back here in Auckland and I want to show you guys something really cool. So this painting is something that my mum bought in China a long long time ago and I've grown up looking at it. It's kind of like just the ideal vision of what China is. You know you got these beautiful limestone mountains, you got this lake running through with some fishermen and this next destination that we're heading over to, Guiling, is going to be a childhood dream come true because we're going to be able to see all of this goodness. Let's get it. Just got off our train ride. It was two and a half hours, but pretty quick and with spectacular views along the way. Still got a bit of a distance to go though. There's a car ride and we might need to catch a ferry. Not 100% sure. We'll find out soon. You made it. I think it's a one hour something minute drive now. Oh no, really? Yeah, one hour something minute drive and then we gotta catch a ferry and then I think there's a little mini drive again. So, more transport, <laughs> but it will be, be worth it. You guys see all those mountains? That's what Guilin is famous for. That's why we're here. Ferry's on its way. And as you can see, we are in the middle of nowhere. That's exactly where I want to be right now. That's our ferry. And we're going there. Yeah. On this little ferry, we've got our luggage on board, and we're about to get to Lao Cha next. I'm really excited. It's the last part of the trip, a little electromobile to take us the last couple of minutes before we arrive. <laughs> and we're off. So, yeah, a lot of this experience, I wanted to keep a surprise for myself, so I didn't actually read much to it. I just knew that it was totally out of the way and we had to do a lot of things to actually get to the accommodation. We booked the experience through Airbnb if you are looking for it and we'll leave all the details in the description below. I already know without even getting to the place though that this is going to be one of those things of a lifetime that we're going to remember forever. Now it's the time that everyone has been waiting for. I'm going to show you all around Lao Jia. So this place has been preserved from the Qing Dynasty, that's the last dynasty of China. It used to be a fisherman's village about 150 years ago, but all 300 of the locals right now pretty much partake in farming. Let's go have a look through these corridors. So there's a couple of characters that you're going to need to know during your stay here in Lao Jia. First and foremost is Hai Bo, who's the caretaker of this home. He speaks really good English and we've been talking to him for a couple of hours. He's such a nice guy and incredibly knowledgeable about the area as well. Now, about the area, there's only one store and that's owned by Mao Shifu. The chef comes over here and her name is Xia Mo and she makes lunch and dinner for you and we're going to experience some of that food a little bit later on in the day as well. Also Ai, who is the cleaner of the place. There's two buildings, we're staying in this one right over here and then there's another building over there and we're going to give you a full tour of the place. So this is where Yen and I will be sleeping for the next 10 days. As you can see, it's a nice cozy little place. Basically has all of your essentials. So we've got a traditional bed, we've got a mosquito net, which is going to be essential because there are mosquitoes in the area and since there are gaps in the home, they can fly in fairly easily. 
Just for our own comfort, because it's quite warm right now, there is an air conditioning unit, a normal size fan, as well as a sink and a mirror inside the room. The toilet is outside and it's a communal shed. You've also got one of these babies, old school style. It's a bamboo stick where you can hang all of your clothes as well as your wet towels. We've got just enough light coming in from one of the windows that's leading into the kitchen and over here we've also got this other single room. What's really nice about all of these rooms is they're all made of this old cedar wood and it just adds such a wonderful scent to the home. Both the walls and the floors and the ceiling are all made of this wood. It really makes you feel like you've taken a massive step back in time and you're really living how people would have been living here hundreds of years ago. Currently in the courtyard at the moment, there's a nice little pond with some calf inside. There's also a couch on this side here so you can enjoy the amazing mountains that's right behind me there. So from the courtyard, it leads you into the shared kitchen, which I'm going to take you through right now. Let's go check it out. This is also where Xiaomo will prepare all the meals for you, lunch or dinner, if you order it. It's only 25 renminbi per person per meal and they are vegetarian only meals. Breakfast however is provided free. So one of the local ladies from the village will come the evening before to deliver two buns for you, two local eggs and soya milk. And with those buns they're called baozi so you can steam it up yourself as well. Which we'll show you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Let's have a look around the rest of the kitchen. We've got a microwave here, kettle and a washing machine as well as a dryer which is very handy as well it's only 10 renminbi per load all these things you just pay to highball at the end of your trip before you check out upstairs we've got some more accommodation and rooms for people to hang out but if you've got a family of three or more you could probably book this room it's got two double beds so while I was exploring a little bit earlier I came across these doors which open out into the communal dining area and occasionally you can expect a visit from one of the locals if you leave the door open outside and they'll just wander around and drink some tea and hang out with you. If you are practicing your Mandarin like I am, it's a huge advantage because they are more than happy to share some of their stories about their day or their time here in Guilin. Check out how massive these taro leaves are. <laughs> So Laocha is made up of two homes. This is the second one. We've already shown you around the first one. So now let's take a look around this area. Xiaomo has cooked us a lovely vegetarian dinner. I'm gonna eat because I'm starving. Ooh, we got some beans over here. That's yummy. It tastes like home cooked meal. It tastes like the cooking that my mum would make. Well, it is a home cooked meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no restaurants or anything near here. I've got what looks like a tofu, and she's made some incredible like chili sauce that looks really good. Oh, ooh, that's spicy. <laughs> that's really good. Morning. So today, well, actually every day, we're going to be making our own breakfast here. So, got our eggs. Got the baozi that we can steam up. Baozi are in there, time to steam away. It takes about 10 minutes for all of them to be ready. And back to Yen, who's going to be making the omelettes. Now we have it. Get yourself a nice omelette with a gooey inside. Ready now. The best part, it's time to eat. <laughs> so these buns are kind of like a childhood staple of mine so I can't wait to try it out and see what the flavour is like. I can tell from the texture already that these are definitely handmade. Like the ones you see in New Zealand, they look very commercialised and processed. Yeah, machine made. Yeah, machine made. A typical nice quality buff, handmade, should have uneven texture and lots of fluffiness on the inside which is exactly what I'm seeing. Yum. <laughs> this is incredible. This brings me back to my childhood days when I used to live in Shanghai, China and my grandma would take me out to eat bugs you feel in your fingers. It's hot. <laughs> now I'm going to try some with some of Yen's omelette and I'm going to top it off with some of this chili. Ooh, that looks like a good bite. Oh, so good. Yeah. <laughs> and the drink that we have here is soy milk. Soy milk. It tastes super fresh, just a subtle hint of soy flavours. Yeah, once again, reminiscent of my childhood. 
Growing up, my parents used to tell me stories all the time about how they would always only be able to eat vegetarian meals for the whole year and they would only have meat one time a month. And so I've always really wanted to experience that, but also experience what it would be like to live inside like a ancient traditional Chinese home. And so this, I know this isn't for everyone, but this has just been one of those magical experiences for me especially. So yeah, I'm really happy. During our 10 nights at Lao Jia, Yin and I spent every day soaking in the local life. From climbing the limestone mountains nearby, to visiting the markets where the villagers would sell their produce, the people in the village were so kind and hospitable to us, often we would be openly invited to their homes for tea and food. Life seems simpler here. It's everything I imagined it would be staying in Lao Jia, and though I didn't grow up here, I found a connection to this village and the people. These are some of the neighborhood kids that I met along the way here. They have been joining me every day for exercising. I started with one disciple, and now I've got two. Oh, ready, ba? That's all. This has been a childhood dream of mine come true. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, Peter has always wanted to live in like an ancient old Chinese home and imagine he's from that era. During the whole time that Yen and I have been together, I've always told her, yeah, I think I had a dream that I was a Chinese warrior <laughs> back in ancient times. And now to be finally able to live this experience has been unreal. For us being Asians from overseas living in New Zealand and growing up there, it is really cool for us to come back to somewhere like China and all of Asia in fact, get in touch with our roots, chat with locals, meet people, learn about the culture and soak it all in. Yeah, it's an awesome experience and we hope you're enjoying it too. Yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this content, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave us a comment as well. And thank you everyone who's been watching us during our overseas travels. We really appreciate all of you guys. Definitely. And also welcome to anyone new who's watching too. We'll catch catch you next time.